We burnt that mug straight to the ground just then because, I mean, I just messed up that bit that goes between the um, uh, chorus section and the, and the start of the second verse. I guess you call it a bridge, but to me, it's just like some sort of weird, almost prog rock thing. That it, you know, it's like... <laughs> I fucked it all up. Anyways, um, <clears throat> hi there, everybody. How you doing? Hmm. Oh, yeah. And welcome to not only my channel, but to uh, a look at an overview of and a, uh, you know, tour through uh, an album by uh, none other than Elton John, uh, with songs written or co-written. I think all the words mostly were written by Mr. Bernie Taupin. In the 19s, early 1970s, they had a record that came out called Tumbleweed Connection. And this was actually the final track on the album, uh, the last track, Burn Down the Mission. But I felt that <clears throat> in many ways, it would be a more obvious choice of getting our feet wet in our look at this record in terms of, uh, you know, where we're starting from. It sets the mood just right. It's not as heavy as some of the other themes that we'll get into later. Because there are some heavy sorts of themes, but you've got to remember from the outset, this album, uh, Tumbleweed Connection, is an Americana album by an expat and a Brit, you know? where it's literally outside looking in and the grass is always greener kind of thing. But it's also highly romanticized with a little R, uh, not, um, you know, like romanticism with a big R. I like me, you know, Lord Byron is fine by me. You know what I mean? I'm down, I'm down with the uh, romantics to an extent um, because I do think <clears throat> lower R, uh, there uh, is a bit of romanticism you know, the colors, the way all of our, us artists um, do our work. In the sense that oftentimes what you're aiming to do with a song or um, any other sort of art is you're aiming to communicate to an audience um, something almost viscerally, something, it's as if you can get to the essence of whatever it is <clears throat> that you're trying to talk to this person about or, or com communicate to them about it's just if you can get to the essence of it <clears throat> through this abstract manner you know not necessarily straightforward you know uh it's 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 all couched in this art 
And it's, and I know that I have felt that way many times. The song will hit me, and I'll be listening to a song, and it'll come on the radio, every day I'm hustling. And you're like, damn, man, that's me. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and I mean, I'm not kidding. <laughs> every day I'm hustling. But anyway, um, <clears throat> what I'm getting at is that <clears throat> while that is more or less what art uh, sort of is, um, uh, has been, people have set out to do with art, rather, it isn't always the case, though, that either are true, in the sense that sometimes you can make art, or one can make art, uh, of any sort, that, you know, while it uh, is, um, uh, you know, it romanticizes the event, let's say, because um, they all do now, regardless if you're, uh, you know, going to be like Slim Shady talking about, I'm sorry, Mama, I didn't mean to hurt you. No, but that's still, actually, an act of romanticizing a really harsh event. And, and in some ways, that, you know, is, uh, it has there's a number of issues there. But what I'm getting at more uh, is that while you can do it either way in the sense that you can also not actually be right in what you're conveying. You can be dead wrong, uh, as it were. And um, I want to explore how just because something makes you feel good or, or whatever doesn't mean that um, <clears throat> it is right, necessarily, or further than that, actually. I, I, I'll take it a couple steps further. I'm not trying to throw too much on you. This is just an intro. But I would like to look at the ways in which romanticism and the understanding of the essence of something, to me, it boils down to something like this. Um, I'm a big Tar Heels fan, okay? And that's what I get my willies out for or whatever as far as the, you know, the pride in my chest and all that stuff. And I actually think it's kind of ridiculous when I hear about uh, some, you know, group of cultural appropriators over here talking about how they're going to lend a hand to these over here because, of, look, you know what? Paternalism is, is ridiculous. Why, you know, people are so... Uh, guilty. Everybody is so damn guilty all the way around. There's nobody free from guilt in anything. So if you could try, and, and I'm not Catholic either, by the way, if one were able to sort of tap the brakes and just say, oh, you know, that's cool. It sounds great. Rah, rah, rah. And I'm into it, but it's not, you know, really uh, um, uh, historically correct. Because that's the thing about rom when you romanticize something, typically, again, not with a big R, what you're doing is you're obfuscating um, what it is in its essence, uh, in terms of the not rather in not in terms of its essence, but in terms of the essence of the materials that make up the exterior of the thing. I should say, because you can't, you know, obviously the essence is the essence, uh, the platonic form of it, even or something. And what I'm saying is actually more like this, that when one, you know, embellishes and makes a story interesting and fudges the details, but in the sake of art, that's the type of romanticizing. But the other aspect of that, which can happen and, and often does, is that in so doing, the actual real truthful thing that that, that uh, piece of art had been intended to communicate, it fell well short of. Not only that, but I would also hope that I, if, if you get nothing else from me, you know, that artists, and I don't care what the art is, I really don't. You're, as an artist, all you are is a vehicle for it. And then after, it, it just so happens that it, that place in time because it really is about place and time, space and time, even Einstein, okay? In terms of what you've gotten out of this zeitgeist, what you've gotten from your parents and when they've hit you, you know what I mean? And then what your natural talents are and so on, which I wouldn't personally know anything about is I have no natural talents other than there's no quit and Randy Witt, as they say. Um, but in any event, Enough about all that, because I'm getting a little bit further than I wanted to, and I'm, I've already gesticulated so much, I'm sure most of you have turned this video off. But what I will want to do 
in you know summary and closing is to look at this record and and enjoy it for what it is. It's a very good record, okay, uh, from the early seventies from Elton John. It is, uh, but it is a amalgamated Americana. It is an amalgamation of what the actual experience of the American lifestyle was at the time it's looking at. Because this this record looks at, uh, oh, I guess, well, heh, I hope to have to not edit this too much, but I should also mention real quick, we've just burned down the mission. We've just burned down the mission in this song, uh, on this album. And, oh, and it's a class warfare song. It's, um, you know, it, but it takes place in, I'm assuming Louisiana, but obviously, you know, for, with a parish, uh, as it were, burn down the mission, there's a parish. It, but it's not, you know, um, it, it certainly doesn't scream New Orleans, but it has the iconography of, you know, Louisiana, um, right, in this song. But yet, I don't totally feel the humidity just oppressing me when I'm hearing that song. Like, I just don't feel like I'm down in Louisiana, right? I mean, like, personally, um, it seems to me a bit interesting in the sense that an outsider, someone who is not, you know, they, they off, the, the cliche says, the cliche goes, um, you can't see the forest for the trees. And that, that is perfectly true. Uh, especially when trying to create art in a first-hand experience, um, that tends to be tough. Um, it is actually much easier for someone from afar to uh, sit back and idly while away the hours thinking about the whatever that, you know, the, the lust for freedom or the, the whatever. And, you know, uh, and, and make things out to be something that, you know, in their... Uh, some parts I would call, you know, uh, in line with jingoism, right? Because um, that's what these men are. These men are, are non-Americans. Well, I mean, an American expat, I should say, and a Brit. And they are romanticizing the American lifestyle, including throughout the record, we'll, we'll cover themes from uh, the American Civil War to uh, the West, you know. Uh, go West, young man. Yeah. Uh, it's... It, the funny thing about cowboys, right? Um, which I've dre- have dressed like a cowboy at points in my life for long stretches, yo. So don't even go there. Uh, <laughs> my granddaddy had cows. I don't know how many of y'all's did, but um, anyway, the point I'm making is that manifest destiny is racist. It's just an extension of colonialism, right? So if you look at it like you know, as it is, logically, uh, and, and with the information and, you know, the historical information we have available to us, and you're not able to see that, well, you are probably a sociopath or, or maybe a psychopath, but certainly you lack some sort of sense of what awful things were done to the native peoples of this continent when the Europeans arrived. Having said that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a good cowboy song. You know, um, so I think that in some ways, Elton John and Bernie Taupin benefit from their being removed from the reality of Americana in their writing about Americana to a point, because unfortunately, the other aspect of not really knowing anything about it is they end up uh, with these narratives that in their songs are oftentimes, or certainly in a couple examples we'll get to as we go along, they, uh, there, it's, um, what, what is the word I'm looking for? There's a lot of um, things that are being misunderstood, and so therefore, again, an amalgamation of disparate things that don't actually go together. Actually, they don't actually function as the same thing. Uh, they're commingling these things in, in a way that, actually makes it into something totally different than the American experience. Nothing, it's actually so historically inaccurate that it didn't, it doesn't exist. It never did. Which is interesting, you know, uh, in and of itself. So this is a, this can, this is going to be heavy. 
it will be a heavy thing, you know what I mean, at, at points. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you that no matter who you are, I will offend you at some point. I don't care um, whatsoever about that. I want to make it clear, again, we are all guilty. Because I feel like if we could level that playing field a little bit and stop having so much self-righteous bullshit in this world, we'd probably be doing a little better. I sounded pretty self-righteous saying that just then, so... I should know, right? Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, but it's not all going to be heavy. I mean, shoot, dude, we're going to talk about, you know, we're going to talk, you know what I know about Pinkertons? Not much, you know what I mean? I, I know a little bit about the railroads and a little bit about these hired thugs called the Pinkertons. I don't know a lot. I know that they were hired to put down a, a riot, I believe it was, in Chicago. Well, maybe if I, let's see here. And in so doing, a lot of African Americans lost their life that day. I'm fairly sure of that. But I'll have to look it up. I, I, I actually don't know right off the top of my head. How about that? I'll leave this in. I don't give a shit. I mean, it should be there. So anyway, the point is, I have rambled on enough. You get the picture, I hope. Oh! Oh, wait. Back to our song of the day. In our song, you have a... We're in New Orleans, right? We're in the bayou. We're, we're assuming that because of the iconography of the parish and so on. Burning down the mission. And this is this is why the other reason I wanted to start with this song is that within this tune, you get this lovely picture into uh, Viva la Revolution, right? Uh, the uh, Which, you know, in France, of course, uh, w- that may have been the most revolutionary of revolutions ever the French Revolution, for fuck's sake, it was revolutionary, all right, I don't want to get into that right this second, because I've already gone on too long, but in this song, you know, it's class warfare, just like the French Revolution, you know, in the sense that you've got the the bourgeois, and and then the lower classes versus the aristocracy, and and the royalty, and so that dynamic's at play, but we're not there, we're no, 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 we're over here in America, for some reason, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go down to the river, and which you know he, in a very body sort of Opry house. And when I say Opry house, I mean Creole Opry house, predating Dixieland jazz. Okay, so but he was a piano player, Elton John, and so or he is a piano player, and so a lot of this sort of pop stuff that you would hear from that type of uh, romantic <laughs> uh, music uh, is present. Uh, the kinds of stuff that's going on in there. Any anyways. Um, there's a, a stretch there. Let's go down to the river. Da, da, ba, da, ba. That's like gospel music. That's like American gospel music. It's like nothing other than Southern American gospel music where African Americans and Europeans came, didn't, didn't come together as people, but they came together and, and were living together, forced to, uh, in the case of a slavery thing. Huh? You know what I mean? Like, and in that sense... That, that, though, ends up making it so this music happens, which, you know, is the, is the one positive I can point to. I can certainly say to myself, and I do all the time, because sometimes America gets up to here with me. Um, but, you know, these disparate cultures from all over the world coming here into this great big melting pot have created American music, which... If you looked around, you can't see right now the one guitar behind me, but I like music, American music in particular. So, um, in any event, this song is a call to revolution. It's a call to vandalism. It's a call to violence. It says, let's burn down the mission. And that's not to be taken lightly. It's not to be taken lightly. Martin Luther King studied under you know, he studied Gandhi, and he believed in a nonviolent way of handling things. And I think he was a brilliant man. I will leave it at that for this episode. Thank you so much.